Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor, and welcome back for our Linux first impressions. Today we will be looking at Queasy, which ironically is a great distro to have to be looking at this week, considering that it's been a week of sickness at the house. My daughter got sick last night, and she's been queasy all day. So... Without further ado, and hopefully that's not the reason why, <laughs> here is Queasy. Queasy Linux is a Debian distribution, as you can see by its logo. This is geared towards a customized KDE flavor. It's based on the 7.2, I do believe. It comes from the United Kingdom. And if I remind myself of a few things here, ah, uh, yes, United Kingdom is correct. And this is their webpage, queasy.com. Now, I've been using Queasy now for a couple days. I normally like to go a little bit more, but I've been having a lot of network trouble. And so recently I had to... Uh, change out my my modem and do some more things and so far knock on wood and cross my fingers things have been very stable so I got Queasy downloaded and installed it came up and installed very easy it was not difficult at all there was one thing in the install I was a little worried about it, it forced me to set a home directory or a home partition and because I don't do that and I didn't have an extra partition to use for it, I went ahead and said the same partition that I was using for my root partition. And the reason why I was a little nervous about that is because I didn't want it to format my partition for root and label it as root and then try to format the same partition again and label it as the home partition and then blow up the whole thing. Needless to say, it didn't do that. It worked okay, but that was a little odd that I had to point it to the same partition, even though I wasn't going to be using a different partition. Other than that, the installation went very smoothly. It was very easy to use. This has been a nice distribution to use. I like the bling that it brings, the kind of look and feel that it gives you and it's very simple it's not that difficult to figure things out you know a lot of people have asked me in the past you know whether an elementary OS is a good beginner OS whether Linux Mint's a good beginner and the problem is most of the beginner OS's have all been Ubuntu flavored now as I said this is a Debian flavored and I like this one this might be one that if you had someone wanting to try Linux for the first time that was on the edge not knowing really what they want to do this has some really nice stuff built into it and it might be one that you might want to try out and uh, suggest maybe try for yourself first of course try the live DVD and see how you how you like it it seems to be very easily customizable and everything seems to have been it seems to run very well it was very easy to get the network installed and connect it to the wireless it's using Conkey over here as you can see to show usage and uptime and and that sort of thing now luckily I, I edited that so that I could hide some of my IP and local network information although what an IP address on the internal network does to help you guys well maybe some hacker knows but yeah, better safe than sorry <laughs> as we move on you know typical interface plenty of icons down here uh, there was one negative that I did see and that is it did pop up saying there were updates available and it didn't tell me you know I was you know, okay well let's start those and make sure we try the updates because I always like to see, make sure that after updates you don't break the system uh, that's happened a couple times when I've done a review where okay everything looks great do the update and kablooey as we saw with the unity dark beta now 
if you haven't seen that Unity Dark Beta, you know, that was a customized skinned version of Unity, and it was a pretty neat skin. I did like what they had done and did like what they had uh, configured for it. But the problem with sometimes that sort of thing is, as soon as you do get new packages, that can blow up a customized skin, customized load of that that someone's done. That was one not in the distro watch, but one that was asked of me to look at and review by a subscriber. As we continue on though with Queasy here, you've got your typical network interface, your USB and connectivity, battery, etc., sound, you know, the, most of the stuff that you're familiar with seeing. It's interesting they added the dropper. This allows you to grab a color, of course, if you're wanting to duplicate an exact color that you see on the screen. Uh, there were some really nice widgets. One thing that I kind of like that I'm going to have to look into, and this was nice that when I installed Queasy, it only had you set up the admin stuff in the beginning, and when you started it up, it asked you about creating user accounts, which was good. It allowed you to create those, set them up, and set up other types of widgets that you might be interested in using, Conky being one of them. Another one that I kind of like here, and I need to figure out what the name of it is because I need to rerun that setup in the beginning to figure it. But if you hit F12, it brings you a quick shell that you can go in and do your work. Now a lot of you guys know when I use my Gen 2, I always have my shell set up. It's always running there in the background. I normally have two tabs because normally you're always working in one and need to go look at something else real quick and don't want to mess up what you're working on the other. But being able to hit F12 and have a shell pop up just immediately and hit F12 again to have it disappear is a really nice feature. I like that. As for the rest of the icons and things, it is using Firefox for its web browser, Dolphin for its file manager, Thunderbird for its email. It did come with the classic KDE look, which is easily changed, of course, if you unlock your widgets and then right-click on the the menu item here you can switch to application launcher style if that's what you enjoy but as it is it did come with the simple quick menu system I like the fact that in here you have the queasy menu and there's a lot of things that you can choose in fact it's the auto start chooser I believe that I found some of those features that were really nice to have you know, these site types of options are really handy to be able to have right at your fingertips where you don't have to go looking and searching for them. If we go on just real quick through the menu, um, I installed of course Q QT4 so that I could get the simple screen recorder to work. I have found if you're trying to do simple screen recording, which sounds redundant when I say it now, when you're trying to do screen capture, I have tried everything from record my desktop, Kazam, uh, using just FFmpeg, and through that I am so thankful that someone brought to my attention Simple Screen Recorder. Now you, you do have to do a little bit of customizing to make this work because you have to compile it from code for Debian, Gen2, and other distributions outside. I think there is a package within Ubuntu that allows you to bring in the um, catalog and be able to install it very easily but for the most part most distributions you have to install it manually you have to always find all the dependencies that it's missing and install those first of course but it's one, one of the best easiest once it's installed screen capture utilities I've ever run across wonderful utility but going back to the menu system here it's got a few things in education I guess just marble it uh, did come with a small set of games, your typical KDE games mostly. Graphics, plenty of applications, mostly of course your KDE default, of course the GIMPs in there. As I said, the internet, it does come with Firefox as your default, but plenty of other applications to play with and look at. In the multimedia, came fully loaded with Clementine, Audacity, VLC, just to name a few, Kden Live was pre-installed, K3B, 
Now, I know a couple of you have mentioned about K3B versus other CD burning software, and I agree. K3B is one of the best burning software packages. You can do everything from MP3 and video with it to data and everything else. I mean, it's just easy to use, very stable, always been a good program to run. If we move on here, um, the full LibreOffice suite, Caligre. Caligre is an excellent program uh, to, to use. We move on, let's see. I don't like how it does have a default that if you don't touch the mouse after a certain amount of time, within five to ten seconds, everything kind of disappears there. Uh, so you feel like you have to keep moving the mouse around to make sure everything is opening up. Uh, nothing of particular interest, I think, within settings and probably same with system. The biggest thing is this is a KDE flavor, so you're going to find that it does come standard with everything that you're used to seeing within KDE. That being said, it's very stable, works well, haven't had any issues. I really like the schematic that they have here. I like the way everything just kind of runs well. The software installations, you know, let me see if I can find that real quick for you because it was a little different with the software setup. And, you know, I think it's probably going to be easier if I switch over to the original style. I do, I wish they would almost take in that old style look and feel I wish that they'd almost go ahead and add in the search button just to make it a little bit easier to find certain things here is your software management for KDE that they have it was very easy for me to install things like just searching in our GUVC view for instance and searching for that finding it when I was looking for the KDE portions that I needed to look for simple to just look for KD or QT and uh, find what I needed, install it. If you go back to the beginning, now this is what I was talking about when it would say there were updates and I didn't see the updates. I mean, the only option it gave you was to cancel or to check later or come, you know, come back and, and tell you about them. Now what I found was once I opened up the software management center here, I could go to updates and then it would check it and then tell me a list of things that needed to be updated and as you can see it was verified 51 minutes 52 seconds ago had a few updates I got those installed that was the only unintuitive portion of this flavor that I thought was a little yeah well maybe I'm missing something there could be other issues but everything's well categorized if you know what you're looking for simple to find if you're looking for something like say um, Tux Racer you could probably search on Tux and find Extreme Tux Racer right there at the beginning. All you have to do is install, hit the install, apply. There you go. It's going to tell you what it's going to need to install. Continue. Ask you for root. And there it goes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let me tell you. So, all in all, I've been really impressed with Queasy. Don't make it. Don't make you sick to your stomach when you work with it. Kind of an interesting name, and I would definitely suggest this to you guys who are looking for a non-Ubuntu flavor that you may want to try out for a beginning, a beginner Linux experience, or maybe something that just works really well, very stable, out of the box with the stable version of with uh, Debian, because I found it to be a rice refresh refreshing flavor to work with easy to to download easy to install and nothing that's that's very frustrating with the whole situation so great little distribution now if you're watching this still uh, real quick next week is <clears throat> going to be a difficult week for me if all goes well I'll be up in the mountains of Arizona camping for our American Thanksgiving holiday which means that I'll be up there hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday through who knows when but I'm still going to try to do my Gen 2 in review video and I'm still going to try to do a Linux distribution review as well I may just come have to come out of the mountains so I won't be too far away from home so I may have to come out 
of the mountains just long enough to try to upload those because I don't think I'm going to have too much good signal. So we'll see. But I will do my best to get that to you guys. So as I always say, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your support. I appreciate you guys out there. And just keep watching. And keep letting me know what you want to be reviewed. And if you have questions, I will do my best to answer them. But remember, I don't ever claim to know it all. And a lot of times when I'm trying when you guys come to me with certain questions, man, if I haven't seen it, I'm just not going to know it. But I'll do my best to try to help you out and point you in the right direction. So until next time, have a great one. Talk to you all later. Bye.